This story took place in the early part of the 20th century. There was a lady who had a husband who was talking in his sleep. It was sort of a one-way conversation. She was puzzled enough to talk to a young psychiatrist, and she asked him, come and evaluate my husband. Then the one-way conversation turned into a two-way conversation after he was probing a little farther. And in this two-way exchange, the voices said something that was quite startling. If you knew who we were, you would not be asking us such silly questions. passes away, it is a very difficult time. We all long for getting another chance to connect or communicate. Our next guest has that very real ability. A medium with a message. Matt Frazier is on a mission using his unique gift to connect those who have passed with the loved ones they have left behind. Right now, Matt. Long Island medium Teresa Caputo in studio and channeling the dead. With all this and on a constant basis, it is becoming more and more difficult to explain the truth. Medium John Edward, and we are packed to the rafters. All of these people would love to be read by Over the long ages of human history, the question, what happens when you die, has been one of the most talked about and most misunderstood subjects across the world. Attendees pay $100 each to speak to the dead. Close your eyes. For some, you go absolutely nowhere. It's incredible to see how this person walks in and they're like, is this real? And then next thing you know, we're sitting there, you know, crying as they're connecting with their mother or their father or their sister or whoever it is. For others, you're recycled into a different life form. An even larger number believe you go directly to either heaven or hell. What happen today is that you know that even though people have left the physical world and they're not here with us on earth, they're still with us in spirit. And there is yet another group who believe wherever you end up, you have the ability to communicate with the living. It's like a family reunion. It's amazing. <laughs> Everybody comes, you know, wanting to hear from a loved one that had passed. And, you know, that's my job of reconnecting them. 24-7. We have both good spirits and evil spirits with us somewhere on our horizon that are interacting with our thoughts. She's gonna be okay, they're with her. They're not worried about you, if anything, they're excited about you. Okay, if he mentions the ring, then he's real. If not, he, this isn't real. That's right. So know that the fact that you had said this, <laughs> really? you said that, yeah, yeah, that I wasn't wearing it for a while and I just recently put it back on. Oh my oh, god! I just got the chills. Mm -hmm. I am not turning in my grave because nobody is being held accountable or to blame for my departure. This is unbelievable. <laughs> wow. I mean, to validate, put this video up nobody I knows that your dad's soul just so nice to, to think about your <laughs> the special people in your life that have died that are still with you. He tells me about the car conversations where you're talking to him in the car, either when you're on your work or on the way to work. And do you connect with him with like pennies, dimes, nickels, quarters? Because he just said to me, he says, that's not signed with one another. As a physician, I was trained to look at history, family history, to trace where an issue may have begun. In this episode, we will endeavor to identify where such ideas come from about death and the dead and what happens to people after they die. When do we first learn about these things anyway? The answer, when we were kids. And that's where I come in. This is Scotty, my enthusiastic 10-year-old co-host. Scotty has agreed to help me make this so clear that even I, a 10-year-old, can understand. Since the dawn of television, this concept of the dead living among us was introduced to children in the most friendly way. An animated show called Casper, the Friendly Ghost. That's right, Scotty. In the 1940s, when cartoons were used as war propaganda, this animated show about a lovable, kid-friendly ghost was introduced. Casper was a bit of a nonconformist ghost, though. He actually didn't delight in scaring people. He actually rather would make friends with them. When it premiered, it featured Casper, who made friends with a fox named Ferdy. The show took a not-so-friendly turn when Ferdy died during a violent chasing. Casper buried him in a grave and was very sad, but then his spirit came out of the grave and they were reunited. So, Dr. Fred, 
What's the big deal? The story had a happy ending. Well, we'll get to that, Scotty. First, we want everyone to see what you found out when you went on assignment. Hi, my name is Scott Ford, and I'm a kid reporter here for ARCV. And I'm here on U Street, and I'm going to be asking people what they believe happens to them when they die. What do you think happens to people when they die? I think when people die, they're at peace, they go to heaven, and I think they're out of pain, and they, they start, they have their judgment. Well, I like to think I go to some place in heaven called paradise. Well, I'm a Christian, so ultimately, I hope that we all go to heaven, those that have been saved. I think they go to a better place. Um, well, I believe they go to a better place. Yeah, I think we go back to the creator, like an ultimate sun, sun pool of light. Do you think they can come back and talk to their relatives? I personally believe they can, but they come in dreams. I think it's possible. Well, actually I do. That's what I kind of call a spirit. Like, I don't believe ghosts haunt us, but I believe, like, spirits, our loved ones can come back and talk to us if we're lucky. Where did you learn that from? Hmm, I mean, I guess just compiling my knowledge and just something, just personal beliefs, I would say. Yeah, from things I've felt or they, maybe things I've seen and just kind of putting those things together. Do you think everyone can speak to those who have died? No, only the chosen ones. I don't know if they hear me or not, but sometimes I talk to my grandfather who passed away. I don't know. Some people claim to be able to. It hasn't happened for me yet, though. Do you believe in ghosts? I do. I guess so, yeah. I think I, I, think I know there's ghosts more than believe. I don't know if I believe in ghosts or if it's spirits more like. Yes. Well, when, they, when it comes to spirits and stuff like that. Yes, I do. Yes, I believe in ghosts. Have you ever seen one? Yes. It was a ghost of my grandmother. Did you get to talk to her? Yes. When I was meditating. Do, do you believe in haunted houses? Yeah, I do. Oh, absolutely. No, yeah. I don't. I think, I think they exist. You believe in that? Yeah. Have you ever seen Casper the Friendly Ghost? I love Casper the Friendly Ghost. Oh, the cute, car like the cute cartoon character? Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to watch it. When I was little, about your size, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to love that cartoon, actually. When was the first time you ever saw it? Oh, when I was a little girl, and I don't remember what the age that was. Probably like five or six, maybe even a little younger. Maybe like eight or nine. Yeah, like or eight, seven, around that age. How old were you when you first started to believe in it? Um, probably around the same age. I. I well, yeah, maybe, or maybe a little bit older with the haunted houses, maybe like 13. People really believe in spirits, up there, down there, everywhere. But they're real happy about it, so no big deal, right? Not so fast. Just keep learning. Scotty, why do you think I ask you to get those interviews? Uh, because I'm a kid? That helps. But the idea was to try to find out where those people began to believe what they believe about the dead. Everybody's beliefs begin somewhere. And usually, we can trace back to when they were kids. I have an idea for an illustration. What is this? A piece of yarn? say there? The truth. Exactly. First Thessalonians 5 says, prove all things. To get to the truth about something, you have to go back to the beginning to find its origin. And often, in order to do that, you've got to dig for it like you did here. That yarn ball that you have there represents the truth. It didn't harm you when you found it, did it? What if I gave you another ball of yarn and I had you tracing back to where it was hidden in the ground. And I told you that when you pulled it up, it was going to say the lie. And not only that, it was tied at the end to the detonator of a hand grenade. Boom! 
Exactly. You may never have gotten to realize that this was dangerous. So what we're going to do is help people determine whether what appears to be a harmless thread of yarn that leads back to the truth is indeed harmless, or whether it's something dangerous that leads to something that will harm them in the end. Can you hand me some of that dirt? Thank you. This is where it all began. Way back at man's beginning, when the first man was made, he was made from dirt or dust, just like this. I've never seen that in any of my science books. That's because it's found in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. And so, from the dust of the ground, God formed man and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Man became a living soul. Here's the point. Prior to the breath of life, we're not alive. We don't have a soul, we are souls. And when we die, what happens is that the breath goes back to God who gave it. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the breath or spirit shall return to God who gave it. When a person dies, goes through various stages of decomposition, and he's left in nature, he goes back to the very soil that we see here around us and was just laid. Can you go back to the dirt part? Let's try it this way. The secret to solving the mystery of death is found in the truth about the soul. Are you a soul or do you have a soul? If you are a living soul, there is nothing that leaves your body when you die. The truth about death is important to understand because if you have a soul, separate and distinct from the body, the door is thrown wide open to the world of spiritualism. The Bible says God only has immortality. If the soul never dies, it must be immortal. But that idea is not found in the Bible either. At the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Satan said, you shall not surely die. Thus the first lie about man possessing immortality was told to Eve. But God said, if you eat the fruit of the tree, you will die. Who was right, Satan or God? Adam and Eve, and Every human being since have fallen under the hand of death. Everyone eventually dies. No one will argue that fact, but what then? A correct view of the soul is found in the book of Genesis. It says, The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Notice the word became. Man became a living soul. It took the body and the breath of life to make a living soul. The word soul in Hebrew means being or creature. With the breath of life, man became a living creature or living being or living soul. Now the question then follows, did Adam have a creature or did he become a creature? Did he have a being or did he become a being? Did he have a soul, or did he become a living soul? A simple reading of the text makes it clear he became a living soul. He did not have a soul distinct and separate from the body. Take away the breath of life, and man is no longer a living soul. Simple. All that is left is the body without the breath of life. Now he is a dead soul, a dead creature, or a dead being. According to the Bible, the word breath and spirit have the same meaning. When the Bible says, the breath returns to God who gave it, it is the same as saying, the spirit returns to God who gave it. Some Christians believe the spirit is separate from the body, that when a person dies, his spirit goes to heaven as a conscious entity. But is this true? Note what Solomon said, the living know that they shall die but the dead know not anything. Their love, their hate, and their jealousy have long since vanished. Never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. So does that mean that when people believe that dead people are speaking to them, that the devil is calling God a liar? You're a smart kid, Scotty. God says in his word that the living know that they shall die, but the dead know nothing. Oftentimes we see a dead person returning to talk to a wife or a husband, like in the movies, 
or children or some other family member. But once they're dead, the Bible says they don't know anything. It also says in the next verse, Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 6, their love, their hate, their jealousy, they have long since vanished. Never again will they have any part in anything that happens under the sun. This means that they are no longer capable of expressing or communicating love anymore. They're dead, or as the Bible calls it, asleep until the judgment. So as you said, Scotty, the devil is using the dead as a medium to trick people into first disobeying what God's Word says, but again, he also wants people to distrust God's character and what he says, and to think of God as dishonest. The easiest way for the devil to do this is through people you love who have died. He preys on emotions. He knows how much we miss our loved ones when they die and they leave. We can't see him, but he sees us weeping and mourning, and he takes advantages of our times of weakness. Has anyone ever spoken to you from the dead, Dr. Fred? No, not me, but many others have had the experience. And there's the one that I'm very familiar with. In this case, the medium was not someone dead, but someone who was sleeping. It all started when a wife would hear her husband talking in his sleep. When Adam and Eve believed Satan, who used a snake, the human race paid a price which we see in the form of sickness and disease, violence and murder, wars, famine, calamities, and all manner of woe. Jesus has promised us that when we believe in him, we will have life after death, but only when he comes at the very end of time. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. But the devil says, you don't have to believe in the Savior, Jesus Christ. He says you can live any way you want because everyone gets to go. And the spirits of dead loved ones are supposed to be his proof. Once again, Satan is saying that God is a liar and you cannot trust him. Those who believe and accept this are pulling an explosive yarn from the spinner of all yarn. This time it will be final. It will be the end.